it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Okay, so today I'm gonna show you how to design buttons in Design Space so that you could use it with your button machine. Now this is specifically for the We Are Memory Keepers brand, uh, the sizing wise, but I think it's probably comparable to other brands. I just don't have other machines, so I can't speak to it. Um, but if you can let me know in comments, I can always show you how to make those adjustments in another tutorial. So, all right, I wanted to show you something. Normally I already have my project open, but I made it here. So this is the button maker, okay? And I'm gonna click customize. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is because when you do this, um, it's gonna say, wow, it's a large project, okay? And when you look at it, it's not a large project. What it is though, it has a lot of words and this right here is really for you guys. But I want to show you this because if you have this with other projects, what I would do is I would just weld it because right now it's a lot of words, uh, letters. And so each item is, I, I feel like Design Space thinks it's, uh, each item is its own piece. So if you weld it, so sorry, I forgot where it is. <laughs> if you weld it, it becomes one image. And so it won't happen again when I, when I go to upload this project. It's not going to say it's such a large file. But I wanted to leave this on here. So let's talk about these buttons. Um, there's a small, medium, and large that you can make uh, with the We Are Memory Keepers button machine. So it comes, the instructions, I have it here, it's in millimeters. And so I wanted to show you, go from millime millimeters to centimeters to inches. And the reason why I did that is because we can change our grid in here to centimeters. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. What you're gonna do is click on the three bars over here in the canvas section, and you want to go to settings. Okay, there it is. <laughs> and you're gonna to go to metric. So once you do that, then what you'll find is all of your um, dimensions are in centimeters, okay? So if you change that, then you can just change, you know, the small button to 3.5 centimeters, the medium one to 4.9, and then the large to seven centimeters. Oops, you know what? This 2.75 belongs with this large. I don't know how it got up there. Um, now, if you didn't wanna make those changes, and I'm gonna flip it back, so, cause I don't deal with metric. So I'm gonna go back to settings, and I'm gonna change it back to Imperial. So I'm back to inches. Now I did convert this for you so you have the inches, the measurements for that. So 1.37 inches, 1.92 and 2.75. And um, it cuts beautifully. What I love about this is you can use print and cut. So these are my logos, right? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna upload, let's find my little logo. And it's somewhere in here. I should really name them when I bring them in. Then I could just search for it. But I don't always do that. I know, it's so bad. Um, all right, so here is one. And I'll show you what I did. So this is just an SVG file. Um, it's got, let's see. Let's move it over here. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that, let's say we're making the medium. So the medium needs to be 2.75 inches, okay? So this needs to be smaller than 2.75 because you want to have a border. So what you want to do is bring in a shape, bring in a circle, make your circle 2.75, okay? So go up into the height and type in 2.75 and then change it to white, unless you wanted a different color. But for me, my logo, I want it behind a white border. So now here's my logo. I'm gonna make this smaller. I wanna make sure it fits well within the circle and just go to arrange, send to the front. And see, I think this is too tight of a fit, okay? So if you look, if you buy your thing, you have this little measurement thing. Um, I'm giving you the measurements of, of it before you press it. So once you press it, your perimeter, the outside, it's gonna scrunch down, so you're gonna lose some of that. So for instance, um, this large one, they want the paper to be 70 millimeters, right? 
when it is pressed down and you have the paper crunch over on the side like you would um, I don't know like a pie um, it drops down to 58 millimeters so it's gonna go from 7 centimeters to 5.8 so just keep that in mind that you don't want your logo to run right up next to the edge because you're probably probably gonna lose some of the arrow um, details right here and maybe even some of the bubbles right so you want to make sure that you're in there and you want to give yourself room right and so something like this would work well because um let's see it needs to be 58 millimeters which is 5.8 and then um so now you can see it <laughs> all right now now that you have the two what you want to do is you want to grab both items and you want to go to flatten when you flatten it the whole thing is going to be print and cut look how pretty that looks i mean that looks like i don't know that i you know went to go get it designed and it printed out and you can see it here i see i don't know it's oh it's not going to focus it's it's really cute i love it um all right so that's one thing now um i'm going to show you this one the salty as fuck <laughs> Uh, that was for me and then this princess saves herself i did that for my daughter okay so go to images and let's do a pretzel oops did it not type okay so um search now you can take any of these pretzels even the ones that are not print and cut right so i chose this one um insert now, of course, if you want that outline, the offset that I did this with the salty and the AF, you need to do that outside of Design Space. I did that in Inkscape, okay? But I wanna show you, let's say you already did it in Inkscape, which I can show at the end, okay? Because for those of you who did not sign up for the Inkscape tutorial, <laughs> um, let's go to images and I'm going to, nope, I don't want images, I wanna go to upload um all right here it is it's these two items that i did in inkscape now i'm like you know right now we're just kind of like fixing our image we um don't worry about size just yet okay okay so let's do this one this one let's ungroup it and we know the green is connected so there's our green layer and for me i changed the colors to I mean, you can choose any color, but, um, and it prints out really, really pretty. Okay, here's the next layer. The next layer, it looks like it's two pieces, and you can tell because when you're looking in your right-hand side panel, the A and the F, it's two separate items, right? So hit your Shift key, because your F um, right now is currently selected, it's grayed. So you wanna grab the A by hitting the Shift key and the A, and then weld it. Okay, and then this is going to be in the front and let's say you want to make it I love having white as the middle layer I feel like it really helps stand out um, whatever color you pick on top so the AF as well I would just weld it I know you don't have to it's not touching it doesn't mean anything um, but I just weld it so it moves as one and let's say this one you wanted to make it um, this pretty light color okay so it's gonna to go to the front. And what I would do is grab the three items and align and center it. That way, Design Space does it. We're not eyeballing it. This is centered, okay? Um, so same thing with Salty. So you can see, let's ungroup it first. And actually, did we group this? Let's just grab these three items right here, okay, and group it so that when we're sizing and moving it around, all three layers are gonna move together so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now let's look at Salty. So Salty, the green is in two pieces, right? You have an S and then the rest of the word. So again, hit Shift, grab that S to go with the Alti <laughs> and weld it. Now the other thing about Offset is you can see, this is my third layer. It's way in the back. Um, I don't really care for these little um, cutouts. I would just go to contour and click hide all. And so you just have a solid background. That's definitely personal preference. 
Um, so you you do you, <laughs> but that's me. Okay, now let's look at our yellow layer. Our yellow layer is also in two pieces. So let's grab in the right hand side panel, grab the two items and weld. And then that's gonna go on top. And then let's match, so I'm gonna do it just like this. So let's match our colors. Our most back layer is that darker blue. Our middle layer is white. And then our top layer, let's grab this and weld it. And our top layer is that pretty light blue. All right, so now we're gonna put just like this. You can grab the three items and go to align and center. So now we have this and let's group it for now. Okay, so we've got our pretzel. We've got this. So the way I did it was I wanted this to kind of touch so that there's a, a full background like layer. It doesn't matter because it's print and cut. And then here's our little pretzel. So let's make it kind of right now. We're not worried about size. We're just making everything proportionate to each other. And then that way in the end, we'll size it when we when we're ready. So let's say you like it like this. OK, so um, I want to grab the the black, the blue, black, the blue back layer. So I'm gonna go over to my panel over here. I'm gonna grab the salty and the AF and I'm gonna weld it. So it's one big blue piece, okay? And then let's move this to the back, go to arrange and send to the back. So here is my little piece, okay? Let's say you like this and we wanna do it large. So we want a 2.75 um, inches of a circle. So let's bring in our circle and do 2.75. Okay. And let's say we don't want white this time. You want, um, let's do a light color though, maybe a light orange. Okay. Um, okay. And then we're going to grab this and we're going to start shrinking it so it fits in our circle. Oops and go to arrange send to the front so we can see it okay so that looks pretty good to me so now grab everything and do flatten and look how cute that is i mean it, it really changes those you know for when you have an svg image and then you change it to print and cut it looks different so you can't don't picture it based on the SVG file. Go to flatten so you can see what it looks like. This looks more, I don't know, what we're used to seeing in the stores, right? Like when something's printed, this looks more like it, right? So let me make it really big so you can see it. I mean, it's it's really cute. And even that orange that we chose. So, you know, you, you have total, um, uh, what am I trying to say? You have total control over all the colors. And sometimes the colors don't exactly match up when you hit flatten. So this is gonna be trial and error. You're gonna have some colors that you like more once you figure this out, you know, just test it out. Um, you have to undo, like unflatten and then change the colors. So I'll do that now. Let's say you didn't like the orange. <clears throat> so I clicked unflatten, did it let me change? No, it didn't yet. So let's see. Oh, it did let me take this out. Interesting. All right. So over here, now I can change my color. So let's say I wanted a darker orange. And so now you can see that. Okay. So it's super easy to do. Now, um, let's grab these items and make it smaller. Oh, I didn't grab everything. See, that's why you want to group everything. So when you change it all, it all goes with you. So I'm grabbing that, grabbing this, and the pretzel, and my circle. And now I'm gonna make it smaller. And it still didn't do it, oh my goodness. Okay, you can do it over here by grabbing everything. So let's look, um, I want this hit the shift key, I want this, and I want the pretzel, and I want the circle, and this. Okay, and I'm gonna group it, so it's moving together. 
All right, so now I want to make that 2.75. Okay, so there's your little, that's one button. Now this button over here, it was so cute, but then I messed up when I made the button. It did, I didn't put the paper on right. It didn't wrap around, but if you look at this, I'm gonna ungroup it for a second, and you can see in my panel, I think, this, the word princess, I did that with HTV. So it gave like, you know, it, um, there's just a little bit more dimension to it. It sparkled, it stood out a little bit. I really wanted to say this princess, right? Emphasize on the princess, but she's super cool because she saves herself and she doesn't need her prince. <laughs> that was for my daughter. So the way you would do this is you would type out, you would type out everything, but you flatten this part, okay? And then this word is just a regular cut file. So you could see over here, it's just welded, but it's cut so that you can make that cardstock, vinyl, HTV, whatever you want. Um, I think for a pin, I think cardstock would be difficult to work with. Um, I loved using the HTV, it cut well. I made this a large and so, and, and I used glitter iron on. So it was really easy to read and put on. I just messed up in the execution part at the end. <laughs> I should have done two copies of everything. So I was really bummed. So I didn't want to do this again. Um, if you change your mind, and you put this in here and you want the purple, but you don't want to do HTV or vinyl, whatever, you can grab this whole thing again and flatten. So you can see what the princess looks like in purple. See, it looks, I, I just feel like it looks really professional. Like it looks like something you would find, um, I don't know, at Hollister or something in the button section. <laughs> okay, so now that you know how to do all these, I have one more tip for you. Now, so when I bought it, it came with um, 10 pins of each size. And that's the other thing that I really like about We Are Memory Keepers is that um, it, it comes with three sizes. And I couldn't find it anywhere. It was completely sold out. And then I saw um, another Instagrammer post it. I'm like, hey, where did you get it? So she sent me to this site. It's called A Cherry on Top Crafts. And I think they still have some available. Um, what is cool about this machine versus the ones I saw on Amazon is it is cheaper. So I'm going to assume that it's not for like professional consumption, right? Like I'm not going to be making these buttons and then selling them and it's not going to be uh, as high quality maybe as the, as the machine that you can get on Amazon because the price was like double or triple. The other thing that I noticed is paying more on Amazon for the, I'm assuming the sturdier machines, you had to pick a size. You couldn't have one that made more than one size. So you had to pick a small or a medium or a large. And so with the We Are Memory Keepers, it comes with all three attachments. So you can make the three different sizes. I will say though, the small is small. Like it was, I don't know, I didn't make a small or maybe I did. I don't know, this is, well, duh, I can measure. <laughs> you didn't hear me say that, that was so dumb. Um, I did make a small, the, this, this is the pretzel one that I made small. Um, it, it's small to me. Um, but it comes with the buttons and it comes with the mylar sheet that goes on top to make it that shiny surface. So you could just do paper and have like a paper button. Um, I wouldn't recommend it though, because just imagine like if you're drinking or something and you get like a little sip, your paper's gone. Um, so I do recommend having that shiny piece on top, but you don't have to buy it, or I don't know how much Mylar paper is, but because I already use the Avery um, sheet protectors for my cake toppers, it feels the same. So I will not be buying, buying Mylar paper. I'm gonna be using my scraps from my cake toppers and um, using those same sheet protectors to put on top of these buttons. Um, cause it's an expensive hobby. So wherever we can save money, you know, um, I, I have yet to buy a new round of buttons, but my husband already messed up on mine. <laughs> if you want to see how ridiculous it was, please go to my Instagram account. Um, all right. So that's it for me. I'm going to do another video to actually show you how to do the buttons. And I'm a little bit nervous about that because 
I have like an 80% success rate on it. And I can't, I feel like I do the same thing each time, but two out of 10 times, I do not have a good button. <laughs> so I, I'm still practicing before I make that video, but I will show you how to change it out because um, I will say reading the instructions, I was a little confused and my husband who was very confused, that makes me feel better because he's definitely, um, he can see things and put things together way better than I can. Um, he struggled with it. So, but once you get it, I want to show you so that you don't have to struggle through that and you can just start making buttons. So hit me up with the comments, um, questions. I will see you next time. Bye. As soon as I can stop, oh my goodness. <laughs>